Good morning and welcome to Hump Day. I'm Joe Jaquin, CEO of the Patriot Trading Group, and our toll-free number, 800-951-0592, the website at allamericangold.com. And how you doing? Listen, I know uh, a lot of the country getting hammered today uh, with, with the cold weather. Old man winter is in the building, even here in the Valley of the Sun. It's cold for us, but hey, we're not going to complain. The sun is out. Uh, I know up on the front range, a major snow event uh, is going on. Uh, Let me tell you how dedicated uh, everybody is to making sure uh, this show and all the other shows uh, must go on. Jason actually, last night, saw the snow falling, said, "Uh uh-oh, Drove to the radio station in the middle of the night. I'm talking like it's midnight. It's 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 early morning today. Because he was like, I don't think I'm gonna we're gonna be able to get to the radio station. I actually slept at the radio station just so this show could go off. Jason, I, if that's not dedication, I don't know what is. Yeah, it, it wasn't that the. Uh that I, 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 my car couldn't make it here. It's just my neighborhood. You know, the, everyone has a neighborhood. Uh, you know that uh, if they're too busy. I mean, on the, on the way here last night, they hadn't even uh, plowed Highway 66, which is a minor highway off of I-25. I wouldn't have made it out of my neighborhood this morning. I don't know how bad it is over there now, but at, at 12:30 at night yesterday, it was it was enough for my car to handle. But another, what is it, 10 hours later or whatever? It's uh, <laughs> That's that's the way it is, and, and for many reasons, Joe, it's a good thing I, I did come in and do this. And I'll say this: so when I woke up this morning, I stuck my head out of the radio station, and I've determined six more weeks of winter. <laughs> <laughs> Puxatani Jason says six more weeks of winter, but hey, we we we'll take all the snow we can get, and again, hopefully it. Uh, flows down uh, the Colorado ri- River uh, and helps the water situation here in Arizona. But uh, today, it's the first week of the month, uh, which means it's jobs week. So uh, today, tomorrow, Friday. So today, we got the ADP jobs number. Uh, ADP, uh, it's nothing more than, than a, it's a private company, uh, and they go out and and talk to businesses. They talk to companies and say, hey, you're hiring, you're firing, you're hiring, you're firing. Uh, and they come out with a number of jobs created or jobs lost. Tomorrow, we're going to get jobless claims, right? This is the one that, despite the fact over the last several weeks that they're talking about, there's 10 million, 11, 20 million jobs out there. Uh, the layoff numbers have been steadily increasing and then on Friday, we'll get the government's number for jobs created. This will be jobs created in January. Uh, ADP started it this morning, uh, and it was it was not good. Let, let, we'll, we'll just leave it at that. It was not a good number. Uh, they were expecting a couple of hundred thousand new jobs in January. According to ADP, uh, there was a loss of 301,000. Now, the ADP number and the government number, they can vary wildly, right? We can have a lot of different uh, opinions, but this is something we kind of speculated, Jason, uh, a month ago. We were talking about, hey, this is this is a bad situation. The economy, whether you like it or not, right? The economy is actually slowing. And we were talking about Hey, the underbelly here, uh, you know, you take away the apples, you take away, uh, let's just say this, be happy that Google had earnings today. By the way, they, Alphabet, a.k.a. Google, they crushed it. Uh, The Dow is actually down right now, and so is the NASDAQ, even though Google's up like 10%, which just tells you how bad the underneath is. Uh, According to ADP, despite all the signs for all the job openings, uh, we lost 301,000 jobs. And Jason, just like we were warning about um, for months and months now, most of the... 
Oh, oh sorry, Joe. Most that, of that job loss was in that small business. Exactly. We were the small and the mid caps were getting pounded last year, and, and the big, the large caps were keeping it up. So it's, that's going to continue to happen. But a little off topic is uh, for the last minute here, Joe. I was going to mention one other thing. Anniversary day. This is. You know, do, you remember, do you remember what you were doing four years ago on the show, Joe? I don't. You went on the air and says, I need to get some partners and open a Colorado that office. That was the day? That was Groundhog's Day. Yeah, that's 2-2. Two, two. Two, two. You, you picked 2-2 two, two of 2018. <laughs> I did not know that. So this was – actually, this is how Jason and I uh, started and Brian, how we all became partners uh, in that. We opened uh, – the shortly thereafter, what was it? I think what April, March, or April? We opened the office. Up uh, there. Well, I started preparing the office in February uh, of, of 2018, and then uh, we had the uh, the, uh, the the gathering uh, sometime in it was late February, or early March, and then our, our Brian and I we did our first show on uh, March 19th. They had to, because the old radio guys couldn't get our show together. We had to wait three, or three two or three weeks after the uh, the get together. That's right. Yeah. That's right. I forgot all about that. Yeah. That's right. Well, happy anniversary <laughs> to us then. Four years. Uh, what an know, adventure, man, Joe. Man, Four years. What do you? Uh, where, unpredictable. Where does the time go? It's <laughs> crazy. It Never feels, thought you know I'd be... what today. It feels a little longer than four years, doesn't it? Uh, yeah, yeah. When you sleep, some, some days it feels like it was just <laughs> yesterday, and other days uh, it's a little longer. But uh, wow, I, I did not know that. A little information there, uh, but yeah. So the the jobs number, uh, just kind of like what, what uh, Jason and I have been talking about. All the job losses, or the majority of the job losses, were in those small businesses as well, right? And again, inflation's just making it too hard for them to be able to operate. Hey, on an anniversary spe- uh, on an anniversary show, we'll be right back. Eight hundred nine five one zero five nine two. Man, I don't even know where to go. How about this? Uh, the first coins uh, ever minted. Uh, by the United States, uh, uh, 1794. Uh, this was back in the, back then. Uh, believe it or not, the, a lot of the because you know that was you know the gold gold and silver was the money back then. Uh, a lot of the the Spanish in the English, even Dutch, French, uh, they were the primary coins uh, in circulation. Uh, so the United States uh, started minting. Uh, some silver coins in 1794. And Jason, the rarest of those that remain, there's not that many of them uh, in existence, uh, but I think there's about 1,700 coins that were made uh, in the Philadelphia Mint. Uh, and it's funny, they were made by, uh, by hand in a hand-turned press. There's only about 140 of them total. Uh, one of them just sold... Uh, for twelve million bucks last weekend. That's correct. Those those old coins, whether they be copper or nickel, silver or gold, any of those coins made in the seventeen hundreds are sought after big big time. You know those uh, those those that's a piece of history in your hand. Yeah, that's a, that's pretty incredible uh, to think about twelve million bucks. Uh, that that is uh, got to be pretty close to an all time record high. Uh, price. They're saying that it was even nicer than the one that's in the Smithsonian. If uh, uh, and again, the, the fact that there's only 140 in in the entire world, Pr- pretty amazing stuff there. How, how about this one? So we we're talking about ADP. We lost 300,000 jobs, and again, just kind of what we've been talking about, where small businesses are really starting to struggle. We're really starting to see it. And Jason and I have been seeing it for a while. Uh, The businesses with under 50 employees accounted for over half uh, of the job losses, according to ADP. Uh, At the same time, the official, I guess, the the government for the first time acknowledging uh, that the U.S. debt has now surpassed $30 $30 trillion. They say it did it on the last day of January. And, and I kind of laugh because they don't even count what's on the Fed's balance sheet. You know, like somehow that debt doesn't count, right? But okay, uh, $30 trillion. 
Uh, and then they started doing, they, they put a chart up, Jason, of debt to GDP. Uh, because the, the worse you are on that number, the more uh, your economy is going to struggle. Uh, let me give you an example. Number one on the list is Japan. And when you think about Japan, right, when's the last time uh, Japan was kind of the uh, an economic powerhouse? You'd probably go back to that 1987 crash. Right, because that that's kind of when uh, the J- Japan stock market crashed and never came back. Never, uh, not even today, are they anywhere where they were in the eighties. And, and I say, you know, I kind of hope. Well, maybe at, by the end of this, we end up like Japan. But I, I, I think we've got a different fate for us. But right now, we are just outside of the top. 10, uh, and this is a list that, quite honestly, you don't want to be in. Uh, the, the, we're 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I think we're 11th or 12th worst as far as debt to GDP. Uh, right above us. So we're at 133.3%. In other words, our GDP, it's somewhere, let's call it $22 million. Or twenty-two trillion. Of course, our debt is thirty trillion. Again, not counting what's on the Fed's balance sheet. So we're actually a lot worse than that. Uh, Mozambique, yes, that powerhouse Mozambique. Uh, they're next on the list at a hundred and thirty-three point six. So we'll probably pass them this month. And then the the Maldives, they're next. Yeah, that other powerhouse at 137. Singapore, 137.9. And then you got countries like Barbados, Suriname, Italy, who comes in at 154.8. Cape Verde, who? And Turia, never heard of them. Then there's Greece, we know about Greece. The Sudan. That economic power, and then, of course, Japan. This is how close we realize. And and really, when you think about that list of countries I just named, right? we've heard of Singapore. But do we really think about Singapore when we talk about uh, economies? Absolutely not. I I mean, we know about Italy, right? Part of the pigs. Italy, uh, not an economic power in any means, right? We know what happened in Greece, uh, but really when you think about industrialized nations, uh, outside of Japan, Jason, we're right there. We're next. Yeah, that's exactly right. And the, the difference between us and Japan is the, uh, you know, we have the re- world reserve currency. That, that's the only, we, we, we can feed our debt to other people. Who's, you know, who's really buying a lot of yen right now, right, Joe? Yeah, well, we we know right. The Japanese, the, their central bank, pretty much owns uh, most of that economy, which is why you know the the Japanese economy hasn't grown in like forty years. I mean, their their economy uh, is literally at zero. It's been at zero for decades now, and and I and I just have this this bad feeling about what's coming next, as we talked about uh, over the last several days, because of the Freedom of Information Act. All that we've learned about what our central bank has really been doing. And it was a lot more than what they said. And, and of course, what that means is they created a lot more dollars than anybody possibly could have imagined. Uh, remember, think about this. What was it? Maybe as, as early as two, three years ago, max. They kind of started trying to, to uh, expose of this new modern money theory. Oh, hey, you guys. We created a bunch of money. We didn't tell you that we created it. But we don't see any inflation. So you know what? Maybe, maybe the textbooks are just wrong, Jason. Apparently, 
we can create all kinds of money and not create inflation. And of course, fast forward to today, uh, and, and we, we've got a major, major uh, economic problem in our hand because a lot of the data has been talking about a slowdown. Let me give you an example. Uh, the Atlanta Federal Reserve, they do a GDP tracker. Right now, that GDP tracker for the first quarter stands at not 1%, not 2%, not 3%, but one-tenth of a percent. Now, it's early, but usually that number starts out really high and then fades as the data comes in. But right now, that number sits at just a tenth of a percent. Goldman Sachs, Bank of America, Morgan and Stanley have all in the last, well, going back from Friday to today, so how many days, in the last five days, have all started lowering uh, GDP forecast. Uh, and Bank of America now is saying that they're on recession watch. And again, Jason, we're talking about raising rates, into a slowing economy, and of course, obviously, uh, that tells us it's going to be stagflation versus inflation, but again, we'll see how soon it is before the Fed changes their mind and goes the other way. Yeah, Joe, and I think, uh, and I don't know, you know, nobody, this is just, uh, you know, speculation, but I think the Fed forced this these, these huge amounts of money during the uh, housing crash onto these banks in these countries, and, and I, I say that because... Uh, for an example, uh, remember we did, they were bailing out all these companies. So, like, uh, uh, was it was a GM or whatever. You know, uh, we got bought up by the by the uh, you know the government, you know, bailout. But Ford, Ford's like, no, no, we don't want that. We don't want to, We don't want to be in prison by more of your debt. See, some of these companies were making choices, and I think for this, this for this little, little trick to, to work, they needed to get a lot more governments and banks more indebted to their free money. So I think, well, well, look at Lehman Brothers. They just let that one go. And I think as soon as Lehman Brothers fell, I think everyone got in line, Joe, and said, give us the money quick. We don't want to be next. Yeah, and you bring up some really great points. And, and now uh, what we learned yesterday, again, more Freedom of Information Act information. Uh, and, and sitting here and thinking about the the bureaucracy that Congress created, to save us, right? We're talking about Dodd Frank. Man, these bills are so evil. I mean, the Patriot Act, Dodd Frank, all of these things are just, and I just imagine what it's going to be with the digital money and how uh, bad it's going to be. But this agency that they created to warn us, I want you to think about what I said on uh, yesterday. How, first of all, they didn't name the banks. And they didn't name the companies. But here's what they said. We're right back to where we were before the financial crisis. I want you to draw a parallel here. Everything was wonderful. Right up until it wasn't. How fast did this thing fall apart? Uh, we had a booming housing market, right? We had a booming economy, and then all of a sudden, one day, uh, while well, the Fed was talking about it, you know what was so funny? The Fed's funds rate was five and a quarter. We're at zero, by the way. I just want to point that out, as you all know. Five and a quarter, and Ben Bernanke was on TV saying, hey, we're getting ready to raise rates again. Right, because the economy was hot, and you know, and uh, you had housing inflation, all this, and of course, the whole thing crashed in seconds. Uh, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll do uh, Bear Stearns. Don't forget this. This is this is the deceit that happens. The CEO of Bear Stearns was on to on TV on CNBC talking to to Jim Cramer. And telling everybody how wonderful his company's balance sheet was. Because there was, there was rumors. Of course, Eric and I were telling you, <laughs> these derivatives are all collapsing. 
But there were rumors, and he was like, don't you worry. The stock was $42. Less than two weeks later, on a Friday night, a backdoor deal was made for J.P. Morgan to assume Bear Stearns for $2 a share, right? This is this is how fast all of these things happen. Jason talked about how Lehman Brothers went under. But what we learned yesterday was the banks were dumping all of these uh, derivatives onto companies like AIG and reinsurers and all of those things. That was the that time. All this they've done now, according to the agency created under Dodd-Frank, is now they've sold it to companies instead of insurers. Well, not that insurers, obviously insurers are companies too, but you you see what I'm saying. Because you've got to remember, why would these companies buy this crap? Well, the answer is simple. They couldn't go buy treasuries and get any interest. And the banks come calling saying, hey, buy some of these derivatives. They're super safe. And, and, and you know what? We'll give you, you know, at least a couple of percent. And now that same agency created says we have systematic risk within the system once again. We'll be right back. Welcome back here, Patriot Radio News Hour. Joe Jaquin, Jason Walker. Uh, right now, gold's up. Uh, 1808 uh, silver's up about 10 cents here uh, 2270 uh, and, and the Dow uh, shockingly today because uh, Google you know and again we, we're we're a four or five company stock market right now uh, Google had great earnings nobody else did uh, PayPal the worst day ever. Uh, for PayPal and, and so many other companies. The Dow's actually down 45 points. The NASDAQ uh, down 43 points. Uh, the internals uh, are, are getting really ugly as far as uh, winners and losers go. But, you know, as we're talking about just this week, we learn so much through these Freedom of Information Acts and think about this. They tell us we've got to invest, right? And, and uh, th- there's no pensions, right? Uh, you got to get a 401k, uh, buy the stock market. And e- even though the data is really horrendous, uh, before the 80s, you got to remember, 401ks didn't exist before the 80s. The credit cards really didn't exist before the 70s. All these debt instruments uh, that that really, unfortunately, uh, don't even come close to uh, the, the the returns you see on the television set. But here's this agency allegedly. Now remember, Dot Frank was created for us. At least that's what they told us. They were going to get rid of the quote unquote moral hazard. Yep, and by golly. We're never bailing out the banks again, and we're sorry. Right? And we're going to make sure. And they created uh, this watchdog agency, whose really its only job is to monitor uh, what we'll call the the dark pool debt markets. Uh, you know, this is you know everybody understands. You buy a home, there's a mortgage. Uh, right, and someone would hold the mortgage. That's, that was the old way of doing it. The bank lent you the money. The bank would hold the mortgage. You would make payments to the bank, right, and all that stuff. And even now, whether it's your credit card payment, your bank, uh, pay, your mortgage payment, your car payment, right, your boat payment, right, whatever your payment on your commercial property, all of these payments, and you're making them to the bank. Well, the bank's really not holding the mortgage on those things. It's torn them up into thousands of people and sprinkled it all over the place and and, uh, created these dark pool securities that don't trade hardly at all. But they sit on the bank's books, all of them priced 
to perfection. Nope, these are going to be good. 100% all good. And everything in here is worth the money we lent on it. Right? And, of course, uh, we know from the housing market, uh, the second something goes south and enough people stop paying, uh, the market gets flooded. All of a sudden, the derivative isn't worth anything close to what the original loan was for. So they come out, and they did this in July. July 12th, 2021. And told, they were supposed to tell us. Of course, while well, they said in fairness, well, we released it with 10,000 other pieces of paper. I mean, we didn't have a press conference. Right, that's Jay Powell. Jay Powell gets a press conference. He can tell you, oh, don't worry, there's no inflation. Oh, well, wait, wait. It's just transitory. Oh, wait, wait. Let's retire that word. He gets a press conference. And they, in this report, they said it's all back again. They've done it again. But here's the sad part. So they said they sold it to companies. Don't you think if we're supposed to be investing in the stock market into these companies that we would have the right to know who bought them because what they said in the report is by the way these companies not only did they buy them they've bought way too much of them and it's one of those unintended consequences of the fed's interest rate policy just like i told you why is wall street buying houses simple because we can't buy treasuries and get 5 or 6%. We'd much rather do that. Believe me, the last thing Wall Street wants to do is own houses. You got upkeep, you got taxes, you got to deal with renters, right? You got to replace uh, air conditioners and roofs and this and that. And they don't want to do that. The Fed forced them. Created another bubble. But Jason... They refuse to name any of the companies that are exposed to this. And how, how are we supposed all all as you get to know, and again, you got to listen to this show. It was, Jim Cramer didn't talk about it. It wasn't on your local news. But the dark pool market is back with a vengeance. And this time, instead of it just being the, the insurers and the reinsurers, why do I got the feeling it's most of Wall Street that's exposed to this, Jason? Yeah, I mean, uh, what, what they're doing in 2022, we'll be lucky to uh, get a piece of what that what that is in 2032, I guess, right, Joe? Yeah, and it's going to be this rate hike thing. I'm telling you, I want to listen to me now. You can believe me later. It can't work. It can't. It is going to blow up that derivatives market as sure as I'm sitting here. Listen, this market was blowing up before COVID. This market was blowing up before anybody realized there was any real problems, right? Donald Trump was in office. It's late 2019. And all of a sudden, it starts. Remember, I broke the story uh three or four weeks ago about some travel agency in in the UK and 2.7 billion dollars of derivatives kind of sparked the of course the Fed had been warned by Bank of America six months ahead of time what the heck are you doing right and they're talking about balance sheet reductions Jason that's just pure fantasy they're lying to the American public that's exactly right, Joe. That's exactly right. That, and they've done it over and over and over again. It's, it's it's all done in shadows and in secrecy. So, of course, if they're doing it in shadows and secrecy, they're not going to tell us the truth until maybe ten years pass, right, Joe? I mean, well, it, it's rare. Again, it's rare that you get an honest statement like uh, Jerome Powell when he was being questioned last week. We should play a little bit of what he actually said about suffering, maybe. You know, eight hundred nine five one zero five nine two. Uh, gold's up uh, nine, eighteen oh nine. Silver's now up fifteen, uh, twenty two seventy five. 
last day. This is the last day on quarters and dimes. We've got rolls of silver quarters. They're at $210 a roll. You're essentially buying 7.15 ounces of silver. Uh, and really, at the very lowest end here, uh, we, we, we've searched everywhere uh, that we could find pretty much the cheapest price in the country here at $210. Uh, rolls of silver dimes. So you get half of that, half of that 7.15 and a roll of dimes, 50 silver dimes at $105. And I'm going to do something uh, today. We're just going to eat the margin on this $20 gold pieces. They're 2075 Today, 1 through 9, 2060. 10 or more, 2050. Last day. Last day here uh, on both of those at 800 951 0592. We've been talking today about the Freedom of Information Act request, uh, what they've done uh, as far as the watchdog agency has issued the code red, if you will. Won't tell us who's involved, won't tell us the banks. Well, we know who the banks are, right? But won't tell us what companies have been stuffed with these things. And remember, with Dodd Frank and how they wrote these laws and the rules. There's no bailouts. It's the bail in, which is perfect, Jason, for the digital money. Yeah, that's correct. I've been, uh, before COVID rolled through here, uh, Brian and I did several shows. I mean, we were ta constantly talking about when they go to digital currency, you know, they can't get negative interest rates. They can't do bail-ins uh, if they have cash because everyone will run on uh, run to cash. So when they get to a digital currency, Joe, you're absolutely right. They, they can go to a digital currency where they can then just start pulling money out of your account if it's negative interest rates or whatever they want to do. Which they're, you know, some of the, the the tax implications of a cashless money system are some of the scariest stuff. Which is the IRS simply uh, forces your bank to report your entire year's deposits and they just tax it unless it's considered a gift or a deposit that has a memo that says it's non-taxable. So uh, there would be a lot of gifts at that point, Brian, or Joe. Yeah, and there's so much, uh, so many things there that you have to really be conscious of and aware of, and it's not good. These rules are in place uh, really to make sure, because we're talking about a reset. There is a bill to be paid. And really what's going to happen, the way this thing works, it's very clear. Hey, those of you that don't have any money, don't worry. You're still not going to have any. Right? You're not. You're going to be in the same spot you were before. Right? Hey, at the end of the month, I've got a dollar thirty-four left over. Well, you're probably going to be in the same spot. Uh, and probably maybe a little worse because inflation is going to be eating it up so badly. But neither here nor there. It's going to be the people that have money in the bank. You're the most vulnerable because there's new rules. And the rules are, well, you know, we have the right to you know, review your account. And, and as I said, listen, the FDIC, this is fact. Go look it up yourself. You don't take my word for it. Look it up. We've got $120, 130000000000 billion. J.P. Morgan all by itself has $2 trillion of insured deposits. It's not payable. It's it's fantasy. You know what the FDIC is for? It's for we shut down Johnson Bank, right? We shut down Johnson Bank, and uh, they were in uh, Schmuckatelli, Idaho. Uh, they had no real deposits, and we can bail that. Like, they can bail that bank. And, of course, now all they really do is give that bank to somebody else, and they slap their name on it, and life goes on. It was never, they never envisioned these mega banks. Now we've got a problem. Now we've got a problem. So what they're going to say is, well, you know what? You had, I, pick the number. Well, you had half a million dollars in it. Well, let's start with this. Well, it's only insured for 250 So uh, we'll just take that, we'll take 250 off the top. And, you know, we've looked at your, your finances and, You've got an IRA and a 401k and this and that and blah, 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 and da, da, da. You know, you don't really need all the 250000 right now. Tell you what we're going to do. We're going to let you have access to, and they'll pick the number, fifty grand. 
maybe a hundred grand. But don't worry, the uh, the rest of it, you know, we're going to give you some some stock in this new bank. Remember how I said new bank? It's going to be a new bank. And I can't sell that stuff. Mm-mm-mm. Now maybe in the future you can, and you can recoup the rest of it. Believe me, that's how it's written. Now here's the other painful thing we learned about the Fed when they released their paper on digital currency. One of the things they loved about it is now we can set negative rates for account holders. Right? Because the Fed is going to be the new bank. That's where you're going to bank at. And they can have a negative rate on your bank account while still having a positive rate on interest rates. In other words, with the digital money, because right now, for most people, we tell you inflation's eating up your money, it's eating up your money, but your bank account, well, it still says I got 150 grand in there. Well, guess what? The Fed will now be able to say, well, we're just going to set the interest rate, who knows, negative 2%, negative 5%, right? Because the Fed hates money in the bank. They want you to spend it to get the GDP. And think about this. At the height of this, we're in a full-blown recession. What a great way, Jason, to get people to start spending money again. Hey, by the way, we're going to hit you at a negative 5% interest rate, and any money you don't spend is going to lose 5%. Yeah, and uh, you know, a peasant, lords and peasant, that's what the, that was the dark ages, Joe, and peasants don't have savings. You can't have savings. You got to that has to go to the lord. You got to pay for that that house that that you have and then that food that you that you eat. You know, you got to you got to pay the lord's taxes. You can't save anything, Joe. That's gold. No way. No way gold. We'll be right back, guys. Stay with us. Eight hundred nine five one zero five nine two. Gold's up ten, eighteen ten. Silver's up fifteen at twenty two seventy five. Uh, last day here on rolls of silver quarters and silver dimes, and, and these are huge discounts. We're talking about thirty dollars a roll less on quarters, fifteen dollars a roll less on dimes. Uh, rolls of silver quarters at two ten. Uh, rolls of silver dimes at $105. And then on the gold side, U.S. $20 gold pieces. Why do we like uh, the old gold, the pre-33 gold? Simple. It's the most private way to own it. Man, privacy is at a premium, isn't it? You can buy it, sell it, trade it. You don't have to give out your Social Security number, and you don't have to get 1099. Uh, 1 through 9 at 2060 If you buy 10 or more, 2050 at 800 951 Things have changed just since Friday. I've been warning you, Jason's been warning you, don't keep a ton of money in the bank. Just don't do it. I mean, I hate to, you're actually better off having it in Wall Street versus the bank. Really, seriously. Of course, the problem is if you got the wrong companies on Wall Street, you're doomed there too, either way. But here's the thing. They've, they're back saying, hey, that derivatives market, you know, the thing, that problem the last time, which we just learned on Monday, the, sped, the Fed didn't spend just a few trillion dollars bailing them out. We're talking, what was it, over a hundred trillion dollars. And that was, listen, that was 15, 16 years ago. How bad is it now? What kind of numbers would we be talking about today? And now the agency that they created to protect us won't tell us who's involved. But the moral hazard is back. That's all they're saying. It's back. And you really think that the central bank's going to be able to raise rates and start a quantitative tightening and not blow that derivatives market up? Are you, You're you kidding yourself. If you want to live in denial, if you want to live with your head stuffed up, your, your, the proverbial backside, that's on you. But it's not even, Jason, it's not even difficult. This is, I, and again, I hate to say it now, but this looks like it's the plan because they're going to, they know that they need to reset it. They knew they need to reset it uh, back back in 08. They just weren't ready yet. Uh, now they're getting ready. The digital currency, and it's so brilliant. They're, I mean, I, I got to give them, they're brilliant. 
They're just so smart and devious. And this, we're going to have the digital money. They're going to wipe out savings. They're going to they're going to hit it all. And then guess what? Anything that's left over, we now have the ability to inflict negative rates on your savings and your money in the bank while still saying that interest rates can be 4 or 5 or 6%. Un- just incredible power, Jason. Yeah, Joe, they're, they're creating uh, wage slaves, job slaves, economic slaves, and they're doing it by permission. You know, everyone's giving them permission to do this. And, and, and oh, they'll beg for it. Listen, they already know when they, hey, the economy is going to be ha- tough times. We know we've lived high on the hog here. We're going to take a beat down. We do, you know, the, the boom and bust cycles. And they're going to say, hey, when we get this digital money, everybody, we're going to have money in your account tomorrow. Yep, don't worry. We're just going to get this digital money thing done, and tomorrow, guess what? Everybody's going to get a thousand bucks. And everyone's going to start clapping their hands, not knowing exactly what they've given up. 800 951 0592. 